Lana Tazum, you, I am Yemi Adekombi. You are welcome to Abeokuta Grammar School Senior Online Thesis Revision Class. Uh, the topic we want to consider today is obtainable quantities from the electric circuit. Last class, we look at how electric circuit can be connected. Then, we also mentioned these physical quantities that can be obtained from the electric circuits. And that means these are quantities the examiner may ask you to calculate from the electric circuit. Then at the end of the day, you are given two questions. The arrangement of cell. I will take care of that as this class is going on. Now, based on what you are taught last, you are taught how to read from the meter room. Before we start today, I want to say, at the end of the teaching today, these are the objectives. The learner should be able to explain the physical quantity we mentioned last class. Then, the learner should be able to determine electromotive force if you have only one cell. And if there are two cells in the circuit, then we talk of effective electromotive force. Three, the learner should be able to uh, calculate effective external resistance and also you also be able to calculate effective internal resistance in the cell. The camera to be able to calculate electric current and of course the candidate should be able to calculate electrical energy and power at the end of the teaching today. Like I was saying earlier, based on last class uh, teaching, you are taught how to take readings from the ammeter. So I would like briefly to have this exercise down and furnish me with the solution to this through this uh, address above. So I will give correction next class. This are uh, you are to read and tabulate the reading on the ammeter below. We have five ammeters indicated. Now, to the main work we have today, the obtainable quantity from the electric current, electric circuit, as we mentioned, are we have electromotive force. If it's just only one cell, we have electromotive force. When we have two cells, two or more, then we combine the electromotive force together. Then we're talking of effective. It's not that here. The first one you can obtain is electromotive force, if it is only one cell in the circuit. But when you have two or three cells, or more than, we can be, you can be asked to calculate effective electromotive force. Then you can be asked to calculate external potential difference, internal potential difference, external resistance or effective external resistance, you can be asked to calculate internal resistance or effective. The word effective is when we have more than one cell or more than one resistor in the circuit. Effective can be replaced with equivalent or total. The question may say calculate effective. You may be asked to calculate the equivalent or calculate the total. That means you are combining the values of those components together. Be it cell, you are combining electromotive force together. Be it resistor, you are combining the resistor, resistance of the resistors in the circuit together. So you can also be asked to uh, calculate, we have this here, the 8 one electric current itself, electrical energy and power. Now, what is electromotive force? The first thing we have to 
the fire is what is electromotive force. Electromotive force can be defined as the work done in bringing a unit positive charge. Okay, right. Work done in bringing a unit positive charge from one point to another. In bringing a unit positive charge from one point to another in an open electric circuit. So we have the electromotive force represented by E can be defined can be defined as the work done in bringing bringing a unit positive electric charge electric charge from one point to another in bringing it from one point to another in an open electric cycle so the most important thing is open electric cycle when is the cycle open that is when the plug you are told when the key you remove the plug of the key that is when the circuit is open in other words the manufacturer of the cell we always put the value beside the cell the, the value they put it by the cell is known as electromotive force of the cell. That means that's the value before the cell starts to deliver current to the circuit. So we can express it mathematically. We are talking of before this. Yes, we can also refer to it as here. Electromotive force. We can refer to it as dragging force. It's already written out for you here. It's the force that drags the current. Now, mathematically, we can express the electromotive force, which is denoted by E. Electromotive force that is denoted by E can be expressed as V plus U. V plus U. V here, capital letter V stands for external potential difference. We refer to this one as external potential difference. And that is it here. External potential difference. Then, small letter V is internal potential difference. So we have external potential difference, we have internal. It means the electromotive force is the sum of these two potential difference, external and internal potential. Now, according to Ohm's law, we have potential difference V can be expressed as the product of current and resistance. And that is what we have here, according to Ohm's law of electricity. Now, if this one is represented as this, it means that external potential difference can be replaced with I, capital letter R, and small d can be replaced with I, small letter R, where I is factorized. You bring what is common to the two of them, which is I, bring it out of the bracket. You are having E equals I into R plus small letter R. We are, of course, this one we have here. V you have, capital letter V. As said earlier, is external potential difference. External potential difference is this. And I, you know, stands for electric current in the circuit. R you have here stands for external. What you call external is actually not in the cell. Resistance that are not in the cell. That means resistor connected to the cell offer that resistance. Deals resistance that are not found in the cell itself is referred to as external resistance. And it can be given by connecting resistor as you are told us. Then we have internal resistance. The internal resistance is the resistance you find in the cell. It's an opposition. The cell itself offers to the flow of current in it. So we now have electromotive force. We define it. How do we now determine it? How do we calculate electromotive force? If you are having just only one cell, only one battery, we can talk of electromotive force, which is E. 
And that can be determined, that can be calculated by using this mathematical expression. E equals I into R plus R. Capital letter R plus small letter R. That's what we need to calculate that. That means to calculate this one, you are expected to be given current and external resistance, internal resistance. That is just for one cell. Now, when we talk of effective, as I said earlier, we can also replace effective with total or equivalent electromotive force. That time, we will not use ordinary E as used for E uh, in cell 1. We are having two or three cells here. Now, we are talking of effective or total equivalent electromotive force. In that case, we denote that with ET as shown here. Then, this is the obtainable when or this is obtained by when two or more cells are in the circuit. This is obtained when two or more cells are connected to the circuit, as we can see. Now, when you have more than one cell, then we talk of how do we arrange the cell? How do we arrange the cell if you have more than one? There are two possible arrangements you can have. You can have series arrangement and we can have parallel arrangement. What do we mean by series arrangement? When you connect positive here, the battery, join positive, you have it here. This is negative, positive, negative. You arrange them such that this negative is joined to the positive of this cell. You have, this is called series arrangement of the cell, which may be three, four, and so on number. Just arrange them such that you connect negative to the positive of the next cell. You arrange them together by using a uh, solar node to join them or paper tape. You can do that. This is series arrangement. How do we combine the EMF? How do you obtain this? When they are series, just ask them together. You ask them together to get the equivalent. This one will now be E1, E2. How do I find the equivalent? Then it will be E1 plus E2. We are having E1 plus E2 to obtain this. If there are three, you add on and on and on like that. Now, don't forget I said earlier that in the cell itself, we have opposition. What opposes the flow of current in the cell itself is called internal resistance of the cell. So the internal resistance of the cell will also be affected when you arrange them in series. How do we find the combination of this internal resistance? You add as you add EMF, and that's what you have here. What you have here is effective internal resistance of the cell. Because there are two cells there, there are two cells there, there will be two internal resistance. And we use this arrangement to combine these together. And that will be R1 plus R2. Because effective electrolytic force is E1 plus E2. So that's how we combine that in series. What about parallel? Now I want you to take note of this parallel arrangement of the cell. Parallel arrangement of the cell. How do we obtain the effective uh, EMF? How do we obtain effective electromotive force? When I say EMF is addition of electromotive force. Now how do we obtain it? It's very simple. These are in series. If you look at this, I mean parallel. If you look at this parallel arrangement very well, you will notice that neg uh, positive is connected to positive here, negative is connected to negative. You can have three, you can have four, five, but the connection will just be positive to positive, negative to negative. So if you have that, very simple to calculate. The effective will now be effective of one of them. The cell arrangement, the cell must be identical. And what do you mean by identical? They must have the same values. So if you have the cell in parallel as you have, they have the same value. We refer to them as identical cell arranged in parallel. Therefore, the effective in this case will just be effective across one. It will just be EMF across one of them. That's why we say equivalent electromotive force or effective electromotive force is equal to electromotive force across one of the cells equals electromotive force across the other two and equals so you can now conclude that once they are in parallel even million of them if they are in parallel we only take emf across one of them that is going to be taken to be the effective 
and then promoting force across all the numbers of cells in parallel. So please take note of this. It is not going to be used as we arrange resistor. Now, the resistance in this parallel arrangement we now have different expression. How do we combine the internal opposition, which we call internal resistance in this cell? That will be combined by using the expression below. 1 over effective internal resistance R to K will now be equal to 1 over R1, which is internal resistance of the first cell, plus 1 over internal. In other words, the sum of the reciprocal. The sum of the reciprocal of the internal resistance will now be equal to reciprocal of effective internal resistance. So once you are able to get this, you can determine uh, effective internal resistance by those cross multiply and make that a subject of formula. So this is how effective electromotive force is calculated. It can either be in series or in parallel. Next one we want to look at what we call external potential difference. There is a difference between external potential difference and this one, but they are not the same. Now, if you want to define external potential difference as we have here, that one is simple. We can refer to external potential difference as the work done in bringing a unit positive charge from one point to another in a Closed circuit or of course closed electric circuit. That means we are removing open. We use open for electromotive force. But now you are going to replace uh, external potential difference if you are to have that external potential difference. External potential difference is denoted by capital letter V, as you have seen it there. And we can define this as the work done in bringing a unit positive charge from one point to another in a close electric circuit. That's just the difference between the two of them. This one is closed, electromotive force is open. That means when you have a battery, you connect the fourth meter, I mean, you connect the wire to the battery. You can use the instrument called fourth meter in the lab. You can use galvanometer and you can also use potentiometer to determine the EMF of a cell. So, in that case, we are using fourth meter to do this. When the battery is not connected to anything at all, you can connect the fourth meter across the uh, terminal of the battery that will give you EMF. By the time the battery is now connected to the circuit and you now plug it, you close the key, the current will now be flowing through the circuit. When the current is flowing through the circuit, you measure the potential difference across the cell when the cell is delivering current. The reading you have at that time will be called external potential. It will no longer be, it will no longer be called EMF because it's working, it's delivering current to the circuit. The value will be different from what you measure when it was not delivering current to the circuit. When it was not delivering current, that's when the circuit is open. That is when you close, you switch off. The measurement then will be higher than when you now close it. The battery is working now. And now, the difference between the reading when it was open and reading when it was close now will now be called internal potential difference. You have external, we have internal. So, as said earlier, the external potential difference mathematically can be expressed. You can say mathematically, mathematically, it can be expressed, it can be expressed as V equals I R, where I is the current R is external resistor. Now we have now here if it is only one resistor in the circuit. If you connect only one resistor, we have R. If you have more than one, maybe two, three, four, then you have to put effective external resistance because you combine those, the resistance of each resistor in the circuit to have uh, effective 
external resistor. This is for one resistor in the circuit. You have more than that. If there are more than one resistor in the circuit, resistor in the circuit, then you have V will then be equal to I R total. You must have combined them to get this. That is where you have this external potential. Now, having known that, the next thing we quickly want to see how do we calculate it is to talk about the internal potential difference. Internal potential difference can be defined as the difference between electromotive force and external potential difference. That means talking about internal potential difference. The internal potential difference will now be defined as uh, the difference between you can have the internal potential difference difference represented by small letter V equals difference between electromotive force and external potential difference. Where of course you have you can say where small letter V is equals to internal internal potential difference then we also know it's also known as loss volt you can also refer to this one as loss volt if you have to calculate the loss volt then E you have there is electromotive electromotive force and here the V there is external potential difference. So that will be the first equation to determine the internal potential difference. In other words, we are saying that uh, V here is called external potential difference, which is it. So that is equation one. It can also be determined. You can also calculate external potential difference by using, you can also calculate external potential difference by using, uh, I mean internal potential difference by saying, V equals I small letter R. We use this if you have only one cell in the uh, electric circuit. But if there are two or more, then we have internal. This is if there, there is only one cell. We use this. But if there are two, three, this is cell. Uh, but if there are two or more, then we can say then we can say V equals I uh, total. That is the second formula. This is the second formula, depending on how many cells you have in the circuit. Now, having known this internal potential standard, we quickly talk about resistance and we already mentioned it earlier so that we can solve at this one example. We want to look at resistance, external resistance. How do we get the external resistance? External resistance can be obtained if you have more than two resistors in the circuit. So let's quickly say external. External resistance. We have R total. There are three possible ways of arranging resistors. Arrangement can be series arrangement. You can have series. Series arrangement of resistor. If you have more than one, this is where you have resistors like this. Resistor like this. R1, R2, R3. Then R total in this series can be R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus da, 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 2 depending on how many resistors you have there then you can have parallel arrangement when you have parallel arrangements then we have this this is what we refer to as parallel arrangement parallel arrangement of uh, resistor we have this Parallel arrangement of resistor is this, in which this is like this. You have R1, R2, R3. You 
have like this. Then we have mixed arrangement. The R total in this parallel arrangement will be just 1 over R total equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. As said when we are discussing the cell earlier. So we can also arrange resistors in mix, we can have mixed arrangement of resistor. So this is uh, now mixed arrangement in which you have a resistor like this combined with that combination of this. So this is called R1, R2, R3. Looking at this arrangement, it's mixed together. How do you find the R total here? It is, these two are in parallel. We use parallel arrangement to obtain this. We then add it up to this. So the arrangement will now be R total here will be R1 plus combination of R2 parallel to R3 total. We must also of all find this using the parallel arrangement to obtain this before it's added up to this. So these are three possible ways of arranging resistor in the circuit if there are more than one resistors in the circuit. Now, the internal resistors I said, there are two possible ways, parallel or series. Let me quickly give working example before we come back to the electrical uh, energy and power we have here. I'll quickly give you the formula. Now, example one, find the effective example one. Find the effective electromotive force. Force. And internal resistance in the circuit below. You have these circuits. Let each of these, E1 here is 1.5 volts, R1 is 0 0.5 ohms, E2 here is 1.5 volts, R2 is 0 0.5 ohms. The two cells connected in series, this is series arrangement, they are identical. And so solution now, you can quickly say solution. You have E1 is given to be 1.5 volts, E2 is given to be 1.5 volts, we need effective. That is not given. But we know that E1 and E2 are in series. Therefore, therefore, E total is expected to be E1 plus E2, depending on how many cells you have. And that's 1.5 volt plus 1.5 volt. You are having 3.0 volt. The effective and internal. The next one is to find the effective internal resistance. So R1 here, 0.5, R2 equals 0.5 ohms. Then we have R total is needed, not given. So because the R1 and R2 are in series, they are in series, therefore R total will be R1 plus R2, which will be 0 0.5 ohms plus 0 0.5 ohms we give 1.0 ohm. That's how this is uh, combined together. Now, in working the calculating this from an electric circuit, if you are given an electric circuit, you have to break the circuit into segments before this can be calculated. Lastly, before we look at that, let us quickly look at how do we calculate electrical energy. Electrical energy is the work done. Work done when the electric charge moves through the circuit. So, uh, the question or assignment I will give it to you, if you have any issue, you are expected to draw your problem or whatever message you have into this address you have above. Now, you quickly want to have electrical energy. Electrical energy. Since it is the work done, we can express this one mathematically as the charge moves through the voltage. Call this one equation one. The quantity of the charge and the product of this. Then the two, since this is quantity of charge, it can equally be expressed as IT. Or you say IVT. That's equation two. 
for this electrical energy. We can have I squared RT to calculate the electrical energy in the circuit. And you can also have V squared over RT to calculate the electrical energy in the circuit. And finally, you can have this to calculate the electrical energy in the circuit. Now, power, electrical power, is just the time rate of doing work. Electrical power can be defined as the time rate of doing work. Time rate of dissipating energy in the circuit. Time rate of dissipating energy in the circuit can literally be, you can say electrical power equals uh, PQV all over T. Or we can say IV. Just remove T. I square R. Then you have V square R. Then you have P is equal to E over D. Well, uh, next class we are going to be giving some exercise on this. We are able to look at how the electric, uh, electric current can be determined, I uh, mean the resistance, the meaning of the motive force, external potential difference, and internal potential difference. So, by next class, I will give you just a simple question to work on. In addition to this, you are submitting find the electromotive effective electromotive force in the circuit below. You have find effective if E1 here is equal to 2.0 and R is equal to 1.0 ohm. 2.0 volt. E2 is 2.0 volt. R is 1.0 ohms. Ohms. Then E3 is 2.0 volts, R is 1.0 ohms. You are finding the effective electromotive force and internal resistance. Then you also, that is A. B, you are to find this in this one two when this cell is now arranged in parallel. You have it in parallel, you have this in parallel, this is this. This is. Now, the parallel arrangement of this is 10 volts, 2 ohms. 10 volts, 2 ohms. And 10 volts, 2 ohms. You are having E1, E2, then E3, then R2, R1, and R3. That's two point this. So, find effective EMF and internal resistance in this. So, I remain your teacher, Yemi Adekombe. God bless you all.